Practice Unit Assessment 1 for National 5 Expressions and Formulae. I'm going to complete questions 9, 10 and 11. These uh, questions cover the standards 1.4, 2.1 and 2.2. Okay, so first question, question 9. Calculate the volume of a, of a sphere with radius 2.3 centimetres, giving your answer correct to two significant figures. Okay then. So the first thing I'm going to do there is I'm going to look at my formula sheet. And what I'm going to find is I'm going to find a formula for question 9 for the volume of a sphere. And that's going to be equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. From there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in the radius of the sphere. And the radius is given as 2.3. Okay. Working that through, what I'll do is I'll just uh, cube the 2.3 on the calculator, and that should give me 12.167. Okay. From there, I'll work out the answer, which should be 20. Uh, sorry, 50.965, and that's uh, some other numbers, and we'll go for centimeters cubed. I've been asked to round this number to two significant figures. So the, so the first significant figure would be the 5 and the number that's here. I'm going to cut the number here. Look to the right. That's a 9, so that's going to change the 0 up to a 1. So that's going to be 51 centimetres cubed. Okay. And that's uh, question 9 complete. Let's have a look at question 10. Okay. So question 10. It's regarding, it's a, a logo for Cyril's cars. It's shown in the diagram here. The logo is a sector of a circle uh, of radius 6.2. The reflex angle is 240 degrees. Calculate the length of arc, and then we'll answer part B after that. We'll go for the length of arc first of all. Okay. So for working out this type of question, I'm going to work out first the fraction of the circle that I'm interested in. So the fraction is the angle that was uh, at the centre, which was a reflex angle, which was 240, and I'm just going to divide that by 360. Uh, this is some calculator work, so I'm not really going to simplify that down. I'm going to leave that as it is. I'm then asked to work out the length of arc. So that's the distance from uh, point A to the point B, okay, so it's the length of arc, and the way I'm going to find that is I'm going to be using the circumference. So whenever I do this work again, I'm going to find out something about the whole circle. So I'm going to find out what the circumference is equal to. So the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter, okay, um, and I've been given the radius, and the radius is 6.2, so I know that the diameter is going to be double that, which will be 12.4. 12.4. I'm not going to work that out at the moment, but I'm going to work out the length of arc. The length of arc is equal to the fraction multiplied by the circumference. The fraction that I've worked out is 240 over 360. I'm going to multiply that by what I have up here. I can work out the answer to that or I can just put in the values. From there I'm going to enter that into my calculator. I'm just going to use the pi button in the calculator and I'm going to start off with 240 divided by 360 times pi times 12.4. From there I get out an answer of 25.97 and that's going to be in centimetres. And that's uh, the length of arc. So I'll look at part B of the question. In part B, Cyril wants to jazz up the logo by outlining, outlining it with a coloured rope. He buys 20 metres of rope. How many logos would he be able to make up? Right, so the first thing I'm going to think about with this rope, I'm going to think about uh, the 20 metres I'm going to convert into centimetres. So the conversion, I'm just going to multiply that by 100, because there's 100 centimetres in a metre. So what I'll get for there is 2,000 centimetres. So that's going to be the length of the rope. From, from there, I'm going to work out the perimeter 
of the logo. And what that's going to be equal to is the length of the arc, which is 25.97, and then it's going to be plus one part of the radius plus another part of the radius, okay? I'm going to gather that together, and that's going to give me an answer of 38.37, and that's in centimetres. So that's the distance all round the outside of the shape. From there, I'm going to work out the number of logos that you can make up. So the number of logos is going to be the length of the rope divided by the distance round one of the logos. If I enter that into the calculator, I'll get 52.12. And if that's 52 and a bit logos, then that's going to make it just 52 complete logos that he can make up. Okay. What I'll do is I'll, I'll show you what we're going to mark here for question 9. So for question 9, the marks that you're going to get will be for substituting um, and starting the calculation. So I think that we're going to get one mark for this part here. What we'll get is we will get uh, a mark for getting this answer here, and then we'll get one mark for rounding to two significant figures. For part for question 10, I'm going to get one mark for getting the fraction correct and also being able to work out this line here, whether I enter in the circumference in there and the, the fraction, or I just enter it in like that. I'm then going to get a mark for the rope conversion and the rope conversion and working out the perimeter and it would be that there. So if I see that in the calculation, that's going to give me one mark. This one here is going to give me a mark against the outcome 2.1. If I look at the, uh, the other part of the, the question, what I've got is, I've got the answer of 52 complete logos. That one there is going to be the final mark for this question. And I'm going to give that a mark against outcome 2.2. The rest of the marks above are against the outcome 1.4. Right, let's go on and do question 11. Okay. So for question 11, what we're looking at is, right, okay, we've got uh, share written a sweet shop is stored in a cylindrical container like the one shown in diagram number one, okay. The share bit is sold in conical containers, so a cone shape, with a diameter of five centimetres and a height of six centimetres, as shown in this diagram. The shop owner thinks he can fill 260 cones from the cylinder. Is he correct? So this one here is a volume question. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the volume of the cylinder. I'm going to work out the volume of the cone. And I'm going to work out how many cones volumes will fit into the cylinder by doing a division. And I'll make a statement just at the end. Right then, so for question 11. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look um, at the formula sheet and see if I get a formula for the cylinder. I find that I don't get that. That is one that I should, really should know. So the volume of a cylinder is going to, going to be equal to pi r squared h. Pi r squared is just the circular end of the cylinder. Multiply that by the height and that gives us the volume. The volume of the cone is going to be equal to one third pi r squared h, and that should be given in your formula sheet. I'll then substitute the, the values in that I have. So I've got pi, I know that the radius here is going to be 10, I'll be squaring that. And then what I'll do is I've got to multiply that by the height, which is 32. Over at the cone, I've got a third times pi times the radius, which is 2.5, I'll square that and then I'll multiply that by the height as well. 
So entering into the calculator, that should work out to be 10053 centimetres cubed. Over here, I've got 39.27 centimetres cubed. Okay, so what I want to know is how many cones are filled. So the number of cones filled from the cylinder. So what that calculation really is going to be, it's the volume of the cylinder divided by the volume of the cone. So the volume of the cylinder that I'd worked out above divided by the volume of the cone that I worked out above is going to give me an answer of 255 cones. Okay. If I looked at the calculator, it would have given me 255.997 Okay, so that's just less than 256, so it rounds down the way in this case, because I could only fill 255 full cones. From that, I can make a statement, and the statement that I'm going to write will be that the, the shop owner can only fill 255 cones and not 260 cones as expected. And what I'll just write is, uh, just one, one thing further, I'll write that he is, uh, he is five cones short of his expectation. Okay. So what we'll do now is I'll just show you how we would uh, mark this one here. So we're going to get four marks coming out of this question. We'll go for the first mark and that's going to be substituting into the relevant equations here or the relevant formulas. Substituting there will just give me one mark across there. That mark there will come out as outcome number 2.1. Okay. I'll get one mark for working out the volume of the cylinder. I'll get another mark for working out the volume of the cone. And I get one mark for giving a clear statement of the, the shop owner's expectations against how many cones can be filled. But I must be showing the working of how I've come to that conclusion. And what I'll get here is that will be outcome number 2.2. .2. The other points, the, the, the question, the marks here, for the volume of cylinder, volume of cone, that will be outcome 1.4. That's outcome 1.4, 2.1 and 2.2 .2 complete.